Yeah. Okay. Hey, I am uh, Michael Sullivan. I am a PhD student at Carnegie Mellon University and a repeat offender intern at Mozilla. This is my fourth summer here and my third summer on the Rust Programming Language Project. And um, this summer I mostly worked on default methods in Rust. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk a bit about Rust, and I'm gonna talk about what was up with uh, default methods, and then some other stuff, the other things I've worked on this summer. Okay, so disclaimer, Rust is still under heavy development. The things described in this talk may not be true tomorrow, although at this point, they mostly are. Um, what I discuss and how I present issues reflect my personal biases in language design, of which I have many, and are not always the same as the rest of the Rust team. Okay, so sort of one thing is, what do we want out of a programming language? And I say we, I mean Mozilla, I guess, the sort of people who might want to write a web browser. Okay, so we want it to be fast, right? We want it to generate efficient machine code. We want it to be safe. We want the <laughs> type system to rule out certain bugs uh, so we can more easily write robust software. And we want it to be uh, concurrent so that it's easy to build concurrent programs and take advantage of parallelism, right? And um, if, if this was sort of a architecture talk, I'd, I'd display the graph of Moore's Law leveling out. That's the start of every talk about parallelism but I'm, I'm not going to. Um, and we sort of want it to be systemsy, we, right? We, we want it to have fine-grained control over when we're allocating memory and when we're doing expensive things. And we want to be able to reason about the performance of it. We don't want there to be too much magic going on. Okay, so what languages do we have sort of in the world? All right, okay, so Firefox is written in C++, which is certainly fast and it's certainly systemsy, but it's tough to write correct concurrent code in it, and it's definitely not safe. Um, ML, like standard ML and OCaml, is, you know, usually sa safe, usually fast, and it's very safe. It's, you know, got very expressive type systems. Um, Erlang is safe and it's concurrent, but it's certainly not fast and it's certainly not systemsy. Um, Haskell, you know, can be fast, it's safe, it can be concurrent. Java and C Sharp are both fast and safe, but not great at writing concurrent code or systemsy code. Um, so what we want is Rust, right? A, a systems language pursuing the trifecta, safe, concurrent, fast. Okay, so some things that we have in Rust is we have algebraic data types and pattern matching, so we don't have any null pointers. Um, and it makes it very easy to sort of represent things like, in, in the compiler at least, it's, it's nice because we can easily represent stuff like syntax trees and lists are very easy to work with and, you know, optional data. We want polymorphism so that functions and types can have type parameters. You can easily write a function that, you know, like operates over lists of any sort of data. We want type inference so we don't always need to write down the types of something. We have a uh, somewhat idiosyncratic type class system called traits that I'll talk about a bit. It is immutable by default, and we have a notion of region pointers that allow safe pointers into objects. Um, some other things is we have lightweight tasks that don't share state with each other that makes it very easy to split off you know, parallel things. We have fine-grained control over when memory gets allocated, and we have sort of a, a notion of move semantics where objects can be owned by a single location and transferred between them sort of as a whole thing. And so someone described Rust as sort of it's like C++ grew up, went to grad school, started dating Haskell, and is uh, sharing an office with Erlang. What? <laughs> okay. Okay, so the, the status of the project is now we have a self-hosting compiler, uh, the Rust compiler that is written in Rust, um, and actually most of the runtime now is written in Rust as well. Uh, it uses LLVM as a backend. So I guess when I say the compiler is written in Rust, really I guess most of the compiler is LLVM. Like LLVM is a lot bigger than Rust C, but all the parts that know about Rust are written in Rust. And it, um, handles polymorphism and type classes by monomorphizing code, which means it generates different copies 
if you if you have a you know function to reverse a list of any sort of type, it'll generate a different copy of that for each type you use of that, which is a lot which is a lot like how C++ uh, templates work. Okay, so the catch though is that you know we're not quite ready for prime time yet. Um, there's still lots of bugs and exposed sharp edges. Uh, language is still evolving, but we're getting really close. Um, although I did use this slide last summer too. We're definitely closer this summer though. <laughs> okay, so what I worked on was the um, the trait system. So traits are interfaces that specify a set of methods for a type to implement. And then functions can be parameterized over types that implement a trait. This is just like Haskell type classes and it shares more than a passing similarity with Java interfaces. So an example of this is let's say we have, uh, we can define the trait of things that we can format as a string, right? So we have a trait toaster and it has one function called toaster and it you know, takes an object and turns it into a string. And so we can then go implement this for integers. And I mean, we just call it like int toaster. Um, but so then the uh, one, one way you can use this is you can write you know, a, a function called exclaim that for any sort of object that you can format as a string returns that object, but more excited, right? So it, it takes in some X that is of a type T that implements toaster, formats it as a string, and it adds an exclamation mark at the end. Okay. That's not that compelling of an example, but... Um, and then we can also implement uh, traits. We, we can create trait implementations that are based on other ones. So if we have a... Um, implementation of toaster for some type T, then we also know how to format as a string an array of T, right? We just map over all the elements formatting each of them, and then, oh, I screwed up this example. It, it needs to, it's supposed to be calling connect on the string to put commas in between, but, um, but so you can, you can create this sort of build up uh, implementations of traits from other traits. Um, okay, so then, it's not the right title for the slide, okay. <laughs> okay, so something that's uh, useful in this sort of traits is you want to have a method where there's sort of a default implementation of it, but you still want to be able to uh, provide an alternate one. So an example of this is you want a trait representing equality and it has a method that tests whether two elements are equal and one that tests if they're not equal but, you know, inequality is just the opposite of equality, so you can just, you know, you can easily implement not equals in terms of equals, right? Um, and so then you can go implement the equality thing, uh, equality type class for, say, here, integers. And you can just provide the equalities, equality function without needing to provide the other one that we gave a default implementation for. So that's handy. Um, you can also choose to override it. In this case, if you want, you know, sort of a more efficient implementation, this, doing this would probably save like one instruction or something, right? Instead of doing equality and negating it, you just do inequality. It, it actually would save a function call if your optimizer is bad, but LLVM is pretty good. So actually, this might be the same. Okay, so overriding can be useful for performance, as in sort of that example, except probably not because compilers are good at optimizing. Um, and sometimes it's actually semantically necessary, right? Like uh, for floating point numbers, it is not actually the case that inequality is just the inverse of equality, right? If one of the two elements is not a number, then both equality and inequality are false. So the state at the start of my internship was all of those above examples work, the code I showed, um, but basically nothing else did. Um, okay, so one, one example of something that didn't work is if you had any type parameters on the trait. Um, and that would 
trigger an internal compiler error. So here we have a trait that's parameterized over some type T, and it, the function you know, takes the argument it's invoked on and something of type T and just returns its argument. And here we have an implementation of it um, for int with int as the type parameter, and, and it didn't work. And the, the reason for that is that there was a sort of mismatch between the type parameters that it thought were on the uh, function it was calling and the actual type parameters used in the implementation of um, the trait. And I'm not going to go into too, this too much because it's sort of obnoxiously technical, but this sort of thing was the main problem I worked on over the summer. There was just a lot wrong with this sort of stuff, and it was sort of surprisingly subtle. Um, another thing that didn't work is if you wanted to call a default method from another default method, like here we have a cat trait, and the scratch method wants to call the per method, and it would crash um, with the compiler. And uh, also it didn't work if you wanted to call a default math method through a type parameter or package up an object with the default method. And so originally I fixed this. Uh, There's just like some problems in code generation where it didn't look at the default methods when it was trying to uh, compile it. But then I eventually fixed it by basically completely reworking how all of that code worked, which was sort of a theme of my summer. It's like I fixed it in some crappy way and then rewrote half the code. Um, another problem is if you had um, had a uh, default method that was defined in a trait that was in another library, you couldn't call it. Uh, and I had a bunch of false starts here because the code for emitting data about what is in another library and reading it in is really scary code. It's just really awful stuff. Um, it's sort of like inherently an annoying problem, but our code is about 10 times worse than the problem is. Um, and the solution is to sort of properly actually export the information instead of, um, yeah. But that's a huge pain because all of our code for exporting information about libraries is awful. And uh, it also required a pretty big rework of all of the data structures involving the type class system. Um, more stuff is when you had a, uh, when you had a trait with um, type parameters on it, it didn't work. I'm not going to go into too much about what that means, but um, ba basically anything involving, uh, so there were a bunch of problems just playing when anything polymorphic had to do with it, and once all those got fixed, then it would work if it was polymorphic, but not if any of those type parameters had a type class on it itself. Um, then there were also a ton of problems with the interaction with the super traits, uh, which involved the most yak shaving of the summer because it required a major rework of how super trait calls are handled, which meant that we needed to actually check how impl whether implementations actually implemented all the super traits, which required improving the trait resolution algorithm. Yak shaving is sort of the... Basically, every time you need to fix anything in the Rust compiler, there are like five things you need to fix first. Um, and it's, it's sort of one of the biggest problems with working on it. So other things I did this summer is I improved uh, the trait resolution algorithm like I just mentioned, um, which allowed us to fix a bunch of code that was using hokey workarounds. I um, fixed some bugs in pattern matching uh, before if you tried to pattern match on a vector, sometimes we took the wrong branch of the match, um, which is really not appreciated. And I'm happy that, and I hope that like nobody actually lost a day of their life because of that. Um, and fixed a bunch of problems with objects and super. Actually, I'm working on that right now. I also fixed a whole lot of bugs just randomly, although a lot fewer than I did last summer. Last summer, my goal was to average one bug closed per day, and I think I hit it just barely. This summer, I'm well short of that. I'll probably have like 0.6 bugs closed per day by the end of the summer. So in conclusion, um, 
Rust is a new systems language out of Mozilla Research that's designed to be uh, fast, concurrent, and safe. I worked on a bunch of different stuff on it this summer, and uh, default methods work now. Um, if you're a Rust programmer, which you aren't, uh, go use them. Okay. Any questions? Okay.